Look at the size of this ammo crap. All bubble wrap. <laughs> Look at how healthy this is. One thing that kind of brought me the wrong way recently is kind of really small purple tang as well. It would be awesome if the tang actually eats the great calibers. Phosphate is sitting at 0.13 at the moment, and the nitrate is sitting at. All right, Reefers, if you see my ugly mug at the beginning of the video, you know it's gonna be a good one. So in preparation of a really, really special addition to the mangrove tank today, we need to get somebody else, and that is the ammo crab. These ammo crabs is a little bit unpredictable, and there have been cases where larger ammo crab actually go after bubble to enemies, and that's rare, but still, I mean, the guy I got is huge, and I can only imagine if uh, my bubble to enemy, which is gonna be small, uh, grabs some food and the crab just goes into the tentacle to dig things out, it's just gonna cause some damage. So just to be safe, we're gonna move the ammo crab back into the refugium of the 135, where it's gonna live like a king. All right, so I'm gonna chum the water a little bit. Let's see here. There is the Blenny, and there are the Banka Cardinal, which has actually carried two rounds of eggs, but usually around three or four days, the male just kind of gave up and started eating again. So one of these days, I hope that they're successful. Oh, there he is. Uh, look at this guy. This guy is fantastic. He has so much personality, so it's kind of like a shame to get him out of this tank, but just to be safe and just to until the... Uh, an enemy get established. But this guy is so, he's like the boss, man. He does not shy away from anybody. Typically hand feed this guy. Look. And this time though, no. And I want to be gentle because I want to make sure he's intact. I don't want to like, to screw that. Got his claw. All right, little buddy. And right here, we're going to borrow Leon's little cubby here. Don't tell Emily, she's gonna kill me. Look at the size of this ammo crab. Isn't this the largest one you've ever seen? Man, I mean, just look, <laughs> just look at this. <laughs> okay, okay, for reals, for reals, for reals. All right, let's get him back into the refrigerator. Conveniently, the refrigerator light is off, of course, uh, but he actually lived down here for quite a while already before I moved him to the mangrove tank. And there's a lot of Chetomophus, uh, macro algaes, and uh, red mackerel, and hair algae for him to munch on. A lot of mice shrimps to be uh, neighbors with. I even have a chocolate starfish right here for a long, long time. They've been living here for a long time. They're doing really, really well. So you have plenty to eat here. You notice I did not do any acclimation between the two tanks for the crab. That's because both tanks' parameter is so similar at this point. Um, same temperature, same salinity. The different, maybe a little bit of water chemistry, but it has always been fine. Just going immediately from one tank to the other. Same thing with the snails and hermit crab that I need to rotate around. But he'll be perfectly fine, and we'll uh, be sure to visit him once in a while because that guy. Leon loves that guy. It's like crap, 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 crap. I'm gonna try to find him. But of course, right now everything is dark, so I can't see anything. But uh, there's much more food for the ammo crab to eat here. There's all these macro from to ch uh, munch down versus in the mangrove tank where I have to hand feed. So that's actually maybe a better home for him. Larger too. Now that we have satisfied the tenants of the mangrove tank and we got the space available now, now it's time for the main events. We are gonna introduce. You know what it is already. This is very, very special. This box right here is something that I've been trying to find or trying to afford for you five said that years. Every time you buy stuff, <laughs> like every, yes, I bought this one. Every right. single stuff. Okay, but this one for real. If you look back at my uh, YouTube videos, I mentioned it multiple times. This is something that I wish I could have at least five years. And thanks to Thirsty Reef, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Finally, it is happening. We got heat pack here because Maryland's getting a little bit cold. Here we go. <laughs> it's like all bubble wrap. <laughs> all right. You see this right here? Huh? It's a jellyfish. Let me let me show you. Hold on. This is a little UV light. All right, from Pilot Lab. It shows different color. Oh, I can't really see it. You see the color? You see the intense coloration on the tips? No. Right here, just the tips. You see this? No. Hold on, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. You know no, how we got a really tiny <laughs> classroom. <laughs> There's no right way that I can move. Okay, so oh, film this way, film this way. Okay. So this, my friend, is a bubble tip anemone. Uh, in my reef tank, I always have at least one rose bubble tip anemones in here. Okay, but this one, this one is special. 
This one. You're funny. Okay, okay, okay. I'm for Ocean. He's trying to say something. Okay, this is not jellyfish. This is a sea anemone. I have been trying to get one for so long, and the reason I did not get one is because of how expensive they are. That's what I want to say. Let's look in the mirror. I'll get her reaction. It's a surprise. So, mom. I'm always a big fan of roast with an enemy. This is a really, really special one. <laughs> this big, is the top of the line. You're a big fan of anything. Guess how much this is. Market price? Market price. Go in price. 500. What's this? $1,300. $1,300. What's this? And that is the reason I have I never am gotten am one. I've always wanted one. I am, I am so we got a friend on Instagram called Thirsty Reef. He is a kind of like a high-end coral seller per se, but he started mass producing these uh, sunburst, Colorado sunburst anemone, and he is actually driving <laughs> the price down. He um, is, I think he's pretty well off all the stuff he's selling. So he thought, oh, this anemone is not as tough. It shouldn't be like 1200 or Sometimes people find them for $900. I've never found it. I feel like, honestly, maybe two years ago, if I find them for $900, I would have bought it. But uh, the fact that he was like, oh, these are bubble anemone, I mean, they're great strength, but it shouldn't be that much. So he went and got a bunch of them and started propagating them. And this is one of the first first clone that came from him at a much more affordable cost. As to how much, watch Aaron, watch on and find out. I'm not gonna say anything when Emily's standing behind the camera. But for now, um, we finally got this guy. I've been waiting for this guy for a couple of months. I've been talking to him. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and float this guy in the mangrove tank. And that's the reason why we're not putting this guy into the 135 gallon, at least not yet. And the little details we'll share a little bit later in this video. But for now, this is sea anemone. Can you say you it? You know how much sea anemone. Leon's one single hair course? 50k. S this sea anemone. Oh, Guys, tell me person. he's making this up. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could see her face. The Tesla is thousand dollars. So here's one share of Tesla right here. One share of Tesla. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. okay. Don't all touch right, it. all right. We'll let it do its thing. We'll go grab dinner and then we'll come back and we'll drip. We'll Neon. Quick, and then we'll, we'll put the Neon. One hour later. All right. So here's a little guy. So I'm under like pretty heavy yellow light. Uh, this is the mangrove light. And you can see that the, the, the anemone is nice and bright. And if I put some more blue on it using the Pilot Lab uh, UV light, look at the way it glows, especially the tip. It has like a flaming yellow tip. This is really gorgeous. And as you can see, the anemone has fully healed. And again, I think I waited a couple months for this guy as um, Thirsty Reef grow it out. Man, look at the beauty of this. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. I'm like breathing heavy. Again, I've been waiting for a long time for finally able to uh, afford and get one of these guys. Whew. All right, this guy's ready to go. So in terms of placement, I know in my experience that Bubble Trip Anemone likes to dig his foot into a cave and kind of hang upside down. Meaning if there's a cave here, it likes to attach a foot to the top of the cave and it kind of hang in and it open up this way. And it seems to like side flow, not so much directly at them, at least like the ones I've had. Like if, if whenever they move, they move to a place like that. I'm eyeballing a couple of spots, but I think the best spot that where it's gonna have the most choices and it'll probably stay put is actually that little, this little gap right here. I uh, got a couple holes, got a couple overhang that it can kind of attach, dig in, attach, and then kind of reach downwards and up into the flow. The flow is going this way, it's kind of circular. So right in the middle, it has a nice mixture of different kind of flow that it can pick. So I think that spot may be, uh, may be what, just what the doctor ordered. And the good thing is that this guy is pretty small. So that it has a lot of choices or it's already trying to attach a bottom of this little uh, bowl right here. And the reason I'm wearing gloves, it's not so much that it's gonna sting me or whatnot. Well, I'm sure it's gonna be sticky, but uh, it's more for in case I have some nasty stuff like lotion and stuff in my hand or on my arm and stuff like that, I'm bring it into the tank. So that's one of the big reason why I like to wear gloves when I work in the tank. All right, let me stop talking and try Look, look at how healthy this is. It's like sticking to my finger. Look at this, the foot is ready to attach. So let me send this guy in here. Right there is good. And yep, I think he grabbed on. His tentacle uh, grabbed onto something and then the foot just kind of like went in after it. So I think that's good. And <clears throat> one thing that I really like is the fact that I actually got one of these uh, 3D anemone guard a while back. And um, I never took it off. 
it is kind of like a hassle to clean each time I do a water change, but it's also for the uh, safety of the fish and in this case also the anemone. So it is perfect. Glad I got it. Two days later. All right, guys, it has been two days since we have received the Colorado Sunburst anemone from Thirsty Reef. Take a look at the coloration of this guy. This is absolutely insane. Now keep in mind, this is pretty much white light on this tank. I'm not even cranking the blue light yet. It picked a spot that is kind of hard to see, unfortunately, but as long as it's happy, it's all good. I can see him pretty well from the top and decently well from the back, so I'm not complaining too much. So quick story time, a little run in with this um, particular morph of bubble plume anemone. I've met this anemone twice. Uh, the first time was at Top, Top Shelf Aquatic, the very first time I uh, visited them at Orlando back in the days. And they had this super metallic gold color anemone in the nano tank. It was decent size too, it was like this size. And I was like, what is that? Is that a Colorado sunburst? I heard about it. I've seen some photos, never seen one in person. And back then, Remy and Austin were like, yeah, that's a Colorado sunburst anemone as in a, a nano tank. Although that tank was like a solid blue. It was really, really blue. So I, I'm not sure if that's the actual coloration. Uh, now I know. And that left such impression. Uh, at that time, that one was not for sale, but I know that they go for about $1,200. So fast forward year and a half, me and a couple uh, content creators visited Ecotech Marine's um, uh, headquarter in Pennsylvania back in the days. And they have this tank with this nice size Colorado sunburst anemone in with a bunch of uh, green stop polyp like what I have there. And that anemone is also once again, super bright. And this tank is a little bit more white. So the coloration, was also amazing and that also left an impression. But then again, I mean, uh, Ecotech Marines, you know, what do you expect from them except for the very best? Yeah, in fact, they even have a clown trigger doing fantastically in a reef tank. So what could I say? But those two times really left an impression on me uh, with this bubble tube anemone. For the longest time, this is kind of like the holy grail of anemone for myself, uh, besides the uh, Magnificent anemone. At some point, I would still love to keep one of them. But the Colorado Sunburst has always been it for me. So I'm super happy and super blessed and I feel super grateful that I was finally able to get one of these guys uh, from Thirsty Reef. Now this little anemone actually leads into a larger question on whether it's actually worth $1,200 or whether certain coral is worth X amount of dollars. Now that is a big topic to tackle. And one can say that, okay, a vendor could list whatever price they want, as long as nobody's selling it, then price is gonna come down. The market dictate the price. And the fact that you could sell corals and anemone and whatnot at a certain price means that there is market and people willing to pay for it. So in their mind, it is worth that much. This particular breeder of this anemone realized that this anemone is just kind of like a bubble tip. It's not any more difficult than some of the other ones out there. So he decided that to adjust the price to reflect how difficult it is to breed this anemone. And when I saw this, I was like, dude, I love this. I support this. And I've always wanted an anemone like this. And right now it is within my range. Let me go ahead and get one. And that's why I got one. Now, to be fair, there are certain corals that are slow growers or really rare or is really easy to kind of melt away. So they justifiably fetch a higher price. There are also corals that are pretty much hyped up. They're pretty easy to propagate and uh, they, the, the price is driven up. But then again, I feel like in this particular case, the market to take the price. The price is that way because people are willing to pay it. Uh, so. I feel like it is really up to the hobbyist himself to decide whether this coral is worth it in terms of your personal uh, financial situation and how much you're willing to invest into this particular hobby. Okay, while we are on these more sensitive topic, one thing that kind of brought me the wrong way recently is kind of, I start seeing more and more of these um, installment payments. Like if you want to buy this nice tank, just set up like a monthly payment plan. I don't think that's a way to go, man. I feel like this is kind of like a luxury hobby. It's not something that's necessary. And if you really need to kind of break up the payments uh, in order to afford something, man, wait till you get into like stocking of livestock. So I think that's just kind of like, maybe it's my upbringing. I've never really held a credit on my credit card, but I feel like if I need to use a payment plan to afford a certain setup in a hobby that it's gonna cost you a lot more down the road, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure if it's the right time to go into a hobby or maybe there's a more affordable version of this hobby that we can get into versus using a payment plan to afford a whole setup. That's just something that I saw, I'm just like, are we setting up these people to fail? Not so much in a hobby, but almost uh, financially. So I feel like that's a heavier topic for a different kind of video, not for this one. Uh, for this particular one, I am just feel blessed that I finally was able to get a uh, Colorado Sunburst anemone.
Two weeks later. What up, fellas? Here we go again. Fish more visit. Say hello. 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 This is a effing gray. Looks like a Congo. Really smart bird. Bunny. Crazy pricey. Bunny. 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 That's right. Huh. Bunny. Mommy right here. Say mommy. Oh, mommy. 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 Okay. <laughs> He's someone a that have girl. Yeah. Oh, girl. Girl. oh, he's like, you guys are too annoying. Going, going, going with Kate. Oh, the end. All right, here we go. Here we go. Look at all these fishy. What's in here? What's this? Oh, mantis shrimp. That is cool. Green mantis shrimp. I've never seen one. I guess it could be a spear. It doesn't look like a smasher. We got some peppermint shrimp. Oh, I like all these uh, macro algae. Nice. Look at these slipper lobsters. These are little lobsters. I think we eat them in Hong Kong. Firefish? Oh, this, these guys are pretty too. We eat pepper fish. Look at this. Look at this cute little uh, spiny fox puffer. Puffer puffer. Look at this beautiful coat. Maybe it's a coat tang. This is a square tail. It's absolutely beautiful. Of course, with Hawaii Ben, you don't see these guys too often anymore. This is interesting. Atlantic Sea Pen Clam. All right, here's the second stop. Fantastic. They're right by each other, so usually I visit both of them at the same time. All right. It just so happened that they have all the fish I'm looking for here. Uh, we got Lyre Tail Amphius. I want to add two. Uh, I've been looking for a small blue throw trigger right here. And Wild Card, they have a really small purple tang as well. All look really active, so. Kind of, kind of torn right now. Lyre tail amphius for sure. To add to the three that I have in the tank, these are really lively, perfect. Now it's down to do I want the blue pro trigger or a purple tank? We got some interesting looking guys here, huh? It's almost like freshwater fish. Look at these. You guys know what these are? Here we got Jared trying to catch. Uh, I'm gonna add three lyre tail amphius to a little group of three. Larry tail amphius and decide to wait a little bit for the other fish because the blue throw is really shy. That one just kind of keep hiding in the rock. Larry tail amphius first and then we'll go from there. My sweet little family, we got mom here. Wow! Wow! Liam, we got fish! Open it! Open, Open it! Alright, hold on. So we floated this bag uh, while we have quick dinner. So these are the two layer tail amphias that we picked up from Fantastic. They're doing fantastic. I specifically picked the smaller guy so that there's not gonna be as much aggression going on. No, no, there's no question about dominance. All right, Leon, put it down, put it on the ground. Uh, what we're gonna do is gonna acclimate them first and then we're gonna do safety stop, uh, dip on these guys and then we're gonna release them into the tank. Uh, this guy cannot wait. Can you wait? Can you wait? Wait. Okay, wait, good. Several song-filled hours later. And here we go. Yeah. Two yeah. new Lyra tail amphibious. Really curious how the uh, existing one is going to find them. So right now the light to the tank is off. Um, I'm using ambient lights. All right, we're having a Mexican standoff kind of situation right here. Two new ones on the left. Two of the three old ones are on the right. Where's the other guy? But the big male is there. Looks like the female is going in, making the introduction. Using the gear per se, maybe. Oh, look at that. There's the circus goby. Well, upside down goby, as some of you guys call it. I see him like maybe once a month, man. So that was a treat. Finally, okay, all five are here and we see the male getting a little aggressive. See that? Kind of asserting dominance. Not just to the new fish, but to the old one as well. That was interesting. Yeah, things are definitely livelier now and it kind of woke all the other fish up too. Well, at least they kind of, the two got integrated into the herd or the pack or the school. That's cool. Really cool to see. Nice. Excellent. So those two are the new ones and the one, in, the two in the back, larger females are the old ones. And we see the, uh, the male just kind of like dive in and out and 
do what he does to stay in dominance. Interesting. All right, well, we're gonna let them work things out, and uh, I guess we'll check back in the morning. Three days later. A bit of an early Black Friday shopping for me because Emily Vaughn is coming in week, week and a half or so. I'm kind of kicking myself. It's like, oh man, MVS adjusted really well with the uh, school that I have. I wish I got one or two more. And among the other fish that I was looking for, the Brutal Trigger, the Purple Tang, or uh, Yashagobi, I wish I got one of them as well because I know that in the next three or four months, I probably would not have a chance to uh, visit a fish show. Maybe I do, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the future holds but just how like uh, i kind of wish i got them because they all look really healthy and those two fish that added to the tank are doing beautiful so three days later i went back and got them <laughs> so with the addition of the two late tail amphias i picked up earlier in this video and there's one more i think right now she there she is she's kind of chilling back there they always go for one or two days of kind of like acclimating to the rest of the tank baits and i'm pretty confident that she'll be out and about so we got five females and one male and that makes the tank look a lot livelier and of course i am also dosing a little bit of the uh nitrifying uh, bacteria just to kind of help boost the bacteria a little bit until it catch up because like besides these three fish in the last uh week and a half i also picked up this guy right here purple tang now this is kind of like a little risky buy right here because I do have a yellow tang in this tank. The reason I say that this is a risky ad is because usually uh, with like yellow tanks, purple tanks, you want to add them at the same time. Otherwise, they most likely will fight until they settle down. Seeing how healthy this one is and the um, drastic difference in size, the size of this guy versus uh, the yellow tang has grown tremendously. So it's almost like half the size. I feel pretty good about it, uh, especially after seeing uh, that this fish has been in the store for a couple of weeks and it has been eating well. I saw him eat last time as well. Um, so I'm pretty confident. Up to this point, the yellow tang didn't seem to pay him any mind at all. I'm not sure if they're actually okay or if the yellow tang is just not see not seeing the fish because of the box or is intimidated by the box. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna leave him in the box for a little bit longer uh, just to make sure everything is on the ups and ups before I go ahead and release him into the tank. I'm really glad that I made this box because now I can see, uh, number one, whether they are really aggressive towards each other right off the bat, and number two, if they are, there's a little buffer buffer space, right? Like maybe I'll keep him in here for a couple days until the yellow tank is totally okay with him, which it looks like he is actually a she. Um, but again, just to be safe, we'll keep him there for a little bit longer before I will go ahead and release him into the tank. But look at all the envious one, two, three, four, five. There, there, there she is, six. Beautiful. So in terms of like big fish, fully stocked, I'm done. Um, I do want maybe two gobies or a mandarin that kind of takes care of the bottom of the tank as well. But for now, um, I think in terms of fish load, this tank is good to go. I think it's safe to say that most reefers are most excited about corals. I am too. But at the same time, I'm also uh, really, really loving the fish. I am a big fish person. I'm kind of surprised I don't have a fish only with live rock tank yet. But uh, this, amazing. Uh, love them, love them, love how active they are and love the energy they bring to a reef tank or fish tank in general. Uh, but again, this tank is fully stocked in terms of like these uh, big swimming fish. The only thing left is probably a pair of gobies or something like that to kind of round out the bottom and that's pretty much it. One thing I get to do with the purple tank while it's in this acclimation box is also make sure that uh, he's eating the food that I offer the fish. It would be awesome if the tank actually eats the grape calibers. Um, I don't think I've actually tried feeding them. Maybe I should because I have them growing out the wazoos in the uh, refugium. The next day. All right, guys, it looks like the tang is just doing its thing and all the residents of the tang are just doing their thing. Nobody honestly paid this guy any mind at all. And this guy is just living his life in isolation, sort of. And I think it's time to uh, get him into the main tank. Honestly, like nobody just nobody even get, come close to him and this yellow tank is just so chill I was expecting this guy to go up and just keep flashing in front of the uh, purple tank, but purple, <laughs> Totally just totally ignore the whole whole setup right here get my gloves on because I know I have like lotion and stuff on my hands and Well, I try my best to wash them off before I work on my tank just to be 100% safe. I like to wear gloves And he's out Let's see what they're doing. 
There is the yellow tang, there's the hippo tang, and we got the purple tang in the back underneath the arch. No big aggression. I mean, Finn is flared, which I don't blame him. It's a new guy in the new guy in the house. Here he is. Look at this guy. Yeah, yellow tang is kind of sizing him up a little bit. I mean, he's a tiny little dude. So hopefully, he doesn't feel any doesn't feel threatened. Doesn't need to uh, lay the smack down. There we go, Tang Gang. All right, got some green seaweed going. I'm using two little fishy seaweed, but honestly, I think um, it looks really similar to the supermarket ones. There we go. Wow, look at the hippo tang. Man, hippo tang is straight up getting a little aggressive with the food. And interesting thing is the uh, Minanurus wrasse, which also seems to like the seaweed, which is surprising. I'm curious if the purple tang, it's probably got too new in the tang, so I'm gonna join in. It'd be awesome if the purple tang actually start eating on the seaweed as well. But I'm um, putting seaweed in there to kind of create some distraction just so that not all the attention is on the new fish right away. And sure enough, the, the tanks right onto the uh, seaweed clip. Oh, they're starting to push the little guy away a little bit. It's like, get away from us, get away from our food. It's more than enough to get around, guys. And yellow tank got big, huh? Haven't, like, now that I kind of stop and look at it a little bit more, dude got big. Oh, there it is. There it is. Bullying the new guy a little bit. But nothing, nothing too drastic. Just kind of show him who's the boss a little. So I'm standing by in case things gets a little bit too rough. Can always place uh, one or the other back into the acclimation box. And that box is a really nice and decent size. The biggest issue is like if two fish, none of them submit. But there's such a clear size difference. And one is clearly has been in the tank longer. So it's pretty obvious that the smaller fish can submit. Now it's a matter of like whether the, uh, the big fish accept it and can coexist. Which, hope so. I mean, my yellow tang, I always feel like it's kind of chill. Maybe it's because it's from Hawaii, you know? Hawaii, aloha spirit. The next morning. This may be one of the uh, more ridiculous things that I've done. Uh, we got a printout of a yellow tank here. We got a printout of a yellow tank here. And then we got two printouts of yellow tanks right here. Now uh, this particular picture seems to really work against the uh, yellow tank that I have, at least currently. Oh look, the purple tank's eating. Glad, glad, glad. Get your, get your energy back. Get those uh, fin filled in. And uh, you get a little chance to kind of buddy up with the yellow tank. Hopefully this will buy him some time. Uh, as the yellow tank is getting confused, be like, what's going on? Why are all these like big dudes are here? Look at this guy, he's all confused. What I'm really looking for here, yeah, he is. Those pictures are definitely bothering him a little bit. What I'm really looking for here is to keep the yellow tank away from that particular corner because that seems to be uh, where the purple tank is taking refuge at the moment. And uh, it just so happened to be the seaweed clip, which is excellent. Get some food into your belly. The next day. I think these photos are probably useful for the first half an hour or maybe an hour or so. And then the yellow tang just slowly got used to them and totally ignored them now. But the good thing is that overnight, the purple tang found the aqua rock structure. And there are a lot of little nooks and crannies that he can get away from the yellow tang. See, yellow tang is not, not big enough to fit in them. Look at this. So it's not the most ideal situation. But um, this does provide a safe refuge for the purple tank, which is good. I guess the uh, acclimation continues. I feel bad for this little guy, but at this point, um, well, he still looks really healthy. He's still going after food. So we'll give it like uh, maybe half a day a day and see how things go. Um, at least right now, it's not being pushed to a corner, which would be the worst, worst thing. Look, right now it's still picking up food and stuff, so that's excellent. All right, guys, it has just been about hour, two hours since uh, the purple tang was in here. As, and this came as a really nice surprise. All of a sudden, the yellow tang is totally okay with the purple tang now. That is weird. It's like, I went upstairs, took care of the kids for two hours. I guess uh, the yellow tang realized how hard I worked to keep the kid happy. It's like, all right, let's give this little guy a break and give this little fish a break as well. It's almost like it was hazing with a really set time period. Like as long as the purple tang lasted over that period of time, the yellow tang was like, okay, fine, you're good. And that was it. And now the yellow tang just completely ignored the purple tang, at least for now. And let's see. 
Yeah. We're good. The next test is having them eat together, which, oh, there you go. That was crazy. Well, let's see. Um, time frame wise, it was short. Acclimation box, the purple tank stayed in the acclimation box for about a day. And then he came out and he started getting beat up in this corner. That's when I taped up all these things, which worked for about an hour. And the yellow tank started continuing chasing after him. Purple tank found that back corner, which helps a little bit because the yellow tank doesn't always back, go back there. Uh, and then night falls and in the morning, I found that the purple tank found this structure right here, which helped tremendously because the yellow tank could not get to him at all. Uh, there's a lot of crevices for him to hide in here. And he was smart, the purple tank was staying in there. At some point, the hippo tank actually joined in, harassing the purple tank for maybe like half an hour or so. Um, but the fact that no fish could actually get to him, uh, I felt good about it. I was like, okay, let's leave the purple tank in uh, the tank for a little bit longer. I was going to pull him and put him back in an acclimation box or slump uh, if that does not span out today. I was especially paying attention to the fin to make sure there's no new bite marks. All those uh, actually is not terrible. I mean, this torn fin, those two little bits were from when he was actually in this corner. But since this morning, there's nothing new. And then two hours later, when it came down again, Purple Tang is uh, out swim swimming all over the place. I think in this particular case, I really lucked out. Um, don't try this at home, guys. Uh, really lucked out in the fact that, look at this. There's this nice big structure right here with a lot of like interconnected tunnels that the Purple Tang could just so happen to go in there and dodge a Yellow Tang. And I guess that kind of diffused some of the stuff. Oh, this is awesome. Great, I guess now I can finally take all these guys off. One week later. All right, Reefers, here's one update on how everything is doing now that the purple tank has been in the tank for about a week. Uh, so you can see the, the torn fin is pretty much all healed up. It has really blended well with the rest of the tank gang here. And the ladder tail amphias, all five of them are doing beautiful. I'm really, really happy uh, that I've added them because they really add like a nice splash of movement and color. Did I say five? Actually, one, two, three, four, f one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, I'm losing track, man. All six Lyotel MVS are doing absolutely beautiful. Um, and the male is keeping busy, uh, trying to like keep all the uh, females in order. And all the females obviously chase each other around a little bit to kind of establish the hierarchy. So it's kind of like an interesting dynamic. The big there is a clam that we added in the last video is doing absolutely fantastic. It's actually picking up some really nice color. And if you look from the top, you actually see like a nice purple rim as well that I did not notice at first. The baby clam actually went to my Reef Sensei Jim's uh, tank earlier this week. Uh, the reason is that I need to free up some space as well like calcium hogs in turn because I'm thinking about adding potentially a gigas, uh, baby gigas clam uh, later on this year. I think OWA is supposed to restock I think early December or mid-December and um, I'll be able to order it through my local fish store. So if you're looking for gigas tank clam that may be a good time to try. So while I was dropping off the clam as well as a pally with Jim I also picked up a Milka Stylo from him. Uh, that's a coral that I've been looking for for a long time actually. It's one of the OGs and it's absolutely beautiful when the when the tips start growing. And also he hooked me up with a nice size chunk of the uh, Elkhorn Mandipora, I believe. While we're talking about SPS, I am trying to take a small frag of the Goldenrod and plant it right next to Slime Bowl because they're the same type of corals. They can actually grow together according to Daniel from New York. Thank you for that great information. Unfortunately, the frag did not make it. It's pretty much out TN out the next day, which is surprising because look at how well the uh, goldenrod is doing in my tank. It's grow. It's one of the fastest grower in terms of SPS in my tank. But that frag did not make it. Um, I'm trying to figure out why. Whether it's the shock of like cutting it and uh, super gluing it down. Um, in terms of light, I don't think it's any brighter than there. They both gets around like 250 to 270 pars. The only difference could be the flow. Um, it's not exactly in direct path of the mp40 but it's close enough that maybe the flow is a little bit strong it's like a direct blast of um reef crest so it may be too strong so i think when i pull frag from the golden rod again i may try a frag like on the other side of the rock so it's kind of shielded from the flow you'll notice that that uh force fire tichitada got that white spot right there so that is actually where I used to glue the frag to the rock, but one of the fish, probably the hippo tank, because it's getting pretty large, ran into it, the whole thing fell, so I super glued it back on. But I don't think I got the spot right. It was a little bit out further this time, so we get that white spot. But I'm pretty sure it'll get uh, overgrown again by the next time I shoot the video. 
Um, everything else seems to be doing really well. I'm surprised by how well the Magnificent is doing. It's actually regaining the nice hot pink color. Uh, the two Miyagi Torts is really, really growing well. It's taking off. They are probably the second fastest grower for me, uh, besides the Golden Rod as well as the Slime Ball. So that's kind of cool. In terms of LPS, they're all doing fantastic in the tank right now. Look at the uh, Force Fire. This is like my pride and joy. Uh, these are the Indo Gold Torch. We got a variety of like uh, New York Knicks as well as the uh, good old Indo Torque Torch. So they're doing good. And the Hammer Frog Spawn are doing nicely. Now the Zoas, once in, the, once in a while I still have struggles like this, like certain colony just closes up, which is kind of odd. We fixed the Rasta issue. Uh, iodine was a little bit low um, and that seems to fix it. This comes out once in a while, um, so trying to figure out what's going on. So Zoas is still kind of like hit or miss. I'm not too sure what's going on. Ganyporas, like decided to move them from this cluster because it's getting really close to the clam and they kind of starting to crowd each other and rubbing up against the zoas. So I moved the larger ones and some of the frags to this corner. So we'll have a, like a proper garden for these uh, ganis. Now today, since we talked about the Chicago Sunburst uh, Bubble Dip Anemone, I have to give a little shout out to my uh, good old Rose Bubble Dip Anemone. This is a local strand that we have here in the uh, Maryland, Virginia, DC area that has been really, really popular. And the color is just nice. Uh, I like it because it does not have any other color besides like a nice vibrant red and like deep, uh, kind of like almost like maroon or black base. Absolutely beautiful. I don't think it's like a black widow because it does not have that white webbing. It's just like a straight up rose bubble anemone. But I like that solid color as well. So honestly, without seeing the price tag, whether if you choose between this rose bubble anemone or the Colorado Sunburst, it's kind of like a toss up. Uh, they're both beautiful in their own way because they have like different coloration and stuff like that. But this is absolutely a pleasure to have in my tank as well. And here's Kowloon. <laughs> with his kill. And I think like the following couple months, I probably won't be down here too much since uh, the in-law is gonna take over the basement. Um, but uh, you know what? I think I'll probably still come down and maybe I'll hang out. And in preparation of everything kind of running on autopilot, I did one more check, a menu check actually on the nutrient of this tank. The phosphate is sitting at 0.13 at the moment and the nitrate is sitting at I think 16 if I remember right. Um, I'm happy with the level. I mean, I would love for the phosphate to go down to 0.1. That's kind of like my target, but I think the ratio was good and um, I really have no complaints about it. So I think the tank has struck a nice balance. Oh man. You know what? Maybe I'll come down more. I know like uh, my in-laws staying down here, but we'll, we'll hang out. We'll hang out from the tank, I think. All the fish is doing well. All the fish is getting I know I keep saying it, all the fish is getting big. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This guy, the color actually lightened up a little bit. I think the purple tang is um, adjusting well. The pinstripe is starting to show up. Before, just like a black splodge. Look at the hippo tang being a little bully. Right here. Uh oh. All right, that's a phone ring. I guess it's time. The kid is up, time's up. All right, so I guess I'll cap off the video right here. Thank you once again for checking out this video. I know this um, irregular update schedule is kind of tough to keep track of. So if you have not already, hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification. So each time I upload a video, you actually get a notification. With that said though, I hope you guys have a fantastic holidays and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Emily went to Canada for a business trip and then she got me something. She got me some pets for the aquarium. She brought it on the plane with her and people are asking, asking her about it. Come on, lift it. Yeah! I love that pole.